Hello, N4H and H here. I'm going to shoot a few clips. Uh, I had a request from one of my Patreons to uh, show some video of the difference between the 3D spectrum scope and the waterfall. We've got some storms approaching, and I thought I would show you how lightning strikes look on the 3D spectrum scope. Of course, you can see right there is where that gentleman was just talking, and that's going backwards. Now, there's your lightning strike. It's a very broad spectrum. See, there he is talking again. This is the marker for what frequency you're listening on. You, if you look closely here, there's another lightning strike. You'll see, see the bright spikes going up and down. That's their modulation, and it's on the left side of the line because this is lower sideband. If it were upper sideband, it'd be on the right side of that marker line. Ooh, that's a strong one there. Let me switch over to uh, Waterfall. And you can see there's where his vo voice ended. This is noise. You can see it there on the uh, Waterfall. Lightning strike. Lightning strike. I'm going to lower my sensitivity. I've shot a video about this, so I'm not going to pan down and show you the radio, but I'm lowering the, the level. I've assigned my custom select uh, so that the outer ring is controlling the uh, sensitivity of the, of the uh, waterfall. And see right here, peak on LV2. If you set peak to LV2, see there's level there. I've got that assigned to the outer ring. I put peak on level two, and what that does is when it's in 3D mode here, that's what created that uh, the white peaks as they talked. Man, look at the lightning strikes. I'm about to shut down here in a minute, but I wanted you to see. And, and the ionosine, when it sends out those uh, ionospheric pulses checking uh, propagation, That'll go across the screen like that too, but it'll be uh, spikes that are, uh, you know, they have a, a, a um, hmm, how do you describe this? They have a, a space between each spike. It's not like that random, what you're seeing there. Um, you can definitely tell when it's the ionosond uh, transmitting one of the ionospheric pulses. And what that is, if you know, haven't watched the other videos, it's a system, and believe it or not, the idea was invented in the 30s, 1930s. Uh, it's a system where they send out um, RF pulses, and they have receivers uh, in various locations that uh, will receive that, and they can then plot that and decide, um, you know, determine uh, what propagation is like. Well, when, when one of those goes across, which what it does is it's moving up, the spectrum you'll see it go across the screen you may hear a little beep you know as it goes by the frequency you're listening to but they have um, clearly defined spikes and spaces in between so what you're seeing here these are lightning strikes so you know and in, in, whereas with the waterfall the lightning strikes will just look like red streaks going across there's a minor one right there. It, you know, it's nice that this radio gives you the option of the traditional waterfall or 3D spectrum scope. And while we've got a little bit of a lull here, I want to show you something else. You can change the color. I've got it currently on the default color of 5. But let's say, for example, I want to go to uh, color 1. See, we're going to have a blue. And uh, currently, if you look at the top right now, my function knob is now controlling color. So if you just rotate it, it'll bring you into the color selection. Now, there's a more of a light blue. So we've got a signal going on right here. And judging by the frequency that is, I can tell you that's AM. Yep. <laughs> and I already happen to have that in the band stack. 3885. You see now, he stopped talking. There's the history. 
a little lightning strike, another lightning strike. Let's go back to 3D. I'm going to increase my sensitivity a little bit. I've got IPO turned on and 12 dB of attenuation. As you see up here, I don't normally use an amp, amp one or two in a, on these lower frequencies. And I also kick in some attenuation, you know, only enough sensitivity of the, in the receiver to hear who I want to hear. I guess he got no takers. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the sideband frequency. Um, I'm, I'm double tapping the band button. So if, if you're still running version 01-04 of the firmware, you can do that. The, the newer versions of the firmware, you cannot double tap band to cycle through the band stack. That's one of the things I'm I'm gonna miss when I upgrade, but I've appealed to Yesu to give us back the double tap. I like that. You know, on a larger radio, you got a separate button for each band selection, and you just tap that, uh, you know, to cycle through the band stacks, uh, which, you know, is three different frequencies and modes you can store. And really, you don't even have to store it. You just, you know, dial them in, and when you come back, they're there. And uh, But on a smaller radio like this, um, you know, you don't have the real estate to put a separate button per band. So you've got this one button here there on the radio. I know you can't see it. You're watching the screen. But, you know, you've got that one button that's um, top left of the VFO called band. And, um, you know, if you tap it, you'll get the band selection, which you can then touch on the screen or use the mouse. But if you double tap it, it'll cycle through the band stack, the, the what they call the registers of the band stack for the band you have selected. And you see, I have one for CWs in there. I have one for lower sideband and one for AM. So now if I come back in here, let's say I change the CW one to 3.560. Now I'll cycle through the band stack and it'll come back to three. So it, it goes back wherever you left it. It's very convenient. And this is not even using memories. The radio has memories and I've shot a video about that too. See, there's memory mode and you know you can you can tap the M button bring up the list of memories rotate your function knob now these are pre-programmed memory bank 5 that's your 60 meter channels they they come pre-programmed for you to to be sure that we don't accidentally uh, go out out of bounds on our privileges there because we share that band with the government and then these are all the ones we have available t to us. And I, I've shot a whole video about storing and everything for the memories. You know, so I just thought I would uh, show you that as a side note here since we don't have anybody talking. But, um, yeah, the difference between the uh, b between the 3D spectrum scope and waterfall. Honestly, I like them both, you know, use one for a while, get bored, go back and use the other one, you know, nothing wrong with that. You know, the, uh, I think they've both got their pluses and minuses, whatever, what have you, but it's cool that you got a radio that gives you a choice. Okay, well, I hope you found the video interesting, um, you know, maybe helpful if you didn't know about the uh, differences there. And um, I appreciate you uh, for watching. Thank you, Patreons, for helping me keep the channel going. Um, I'll put the uh, web address up if you want to become a Patreon and help us keep this kind of content coming. I do appreciate uh, those of you who have participated in the Patreon program to help me justify the time I put in doing these. And, of course, if you would, uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. That helps us out uh, more than you know. And, of course, if you would, click the bell and you'll be notified when I upload the next video. Okay, hey, thanks for watching. Looks like the lightning is coming back, so I better get, get this thing off the air. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. And 73 from N4 H&H. &H.